On his family compound in Costa Rica, Kevin Barber is building a self-sustaining aquaponics system. But Costa Rica's notoriously rugged road conditions might be too much stress for the fish he is transporting to handle. It took about 10 minutes to get them all loaded up in the truck, so I think that we need to get them back into the water here. We want to be able to uh, overproduce food in our aquaponics system so that not only are we well provided for here on the property, but we can even share or barter for things that we need. All right, guys, here's your new house. I want the gold one, Pocahontas. OK. Pocahontas. Now that the fish are part of the system, the recirculation process can begin. The treated waste from the dump tank will be turned into nutrient-rich fertilizer to feed the plants in the grow beds. Then, the excess water is directed back into two ponds, one with the fish and another where duckweed is already growing. It doesn't look like anything too miraculous. It looks like different pieces all piped and plumbed together that uh, ultimately create a, uh, an ecosystem of food production. But the final piece of the puzzle is the most difficult harnessing the sun's rays to power the entire system. I've got it. In go. this remote part of Costa Rica, blackouts are a common occurrence, leading the barbers to rely on a generator that runs on gas. Can I connect that? There you go. Muy fuerte. But in the event of an economic collapse, fuel for a generator could be scarce. So solar offers the most dependable source of off-the-grid power. Is that heavy? It's definitely heavy. These are our off-grid batteries that we're using to set up the uh, aquaponics pump. Uh, it'll be able to run basically off of a solar charge, uh, and then the solar power will go into these batteries so that the pump can run at night or on cloudy days. 